Am I the a-hole for refusing to go with my 16-year-old daughter to her father's funeral? My ex-husband, my daughter's father, passed away two days ago at the age of 36. My 16-year-old daughter begged that I go with her to the funeral home because she said she doesn't know anyone there and needs my support and guidance. I refused because I did not feel comfortable. And then seeing my former in-laws, it's just not worth the pain. Plus that her grandparents and her younger uncle that she adores so much will be there, so that is good enough. I also offered to have my brother drive her there and return her home later, but she refused and kept begging that I go with her. I told her no, and that I have my reasons, and that's it. She unloaded on me yesterday calling me bitter and selfish, and said that my hatred for her dad is still there and is disgusting. I was really hurt to have an argument with her, but didn't punish her for what she called me because she's grieving and is processing her father's passing. I just cut the argument and told her to go upstairs. She went inside her room and refused to come out for lunch and dinner. My boyfriend tried to stay with her and get her to eat, but she refused. He told me later that this is obviously something my daughter is not dealing with properly and suggested I just go to the funeral home because if I don't, then there will be lasting resentment for my daughter. I went to bed but couldn't sleep over this. I feel like just because she wants this doesn't mean I just go with it. I never push her to do anything she doesn't want to do. Edit. Just a minute for those who are suspecting that there's a girlfriend there that I don't want to see. No, nothing like that. My ex-husband never dated after me because he was dealing with multiple chronic conditions, which is the main reason for our separation. My daughter never wanted us to divorce and she blamed me when the courts granted me custody because her dad was not able to care for her. I don't hate my ex-husband. He's my daughter's father and losing him is devastating for me. That is why I wanted to grieve in peace. As for my in-laws, they resent me for initiating divorce in the first place and accused me of abandoning their son. Now for the top comments. You're the a-hole. That's your 16-year-old daughter. And you're just not willing to support her doing the hardest thing she'll ever do? You're not a mom. You just gave birth to her. Something tells me once she turns 18, Opie won't be seeing a whole lot of her. I've already had it. But in some sense, that amplifies the issue because she's completely putting her grief before her daughters. You're the a-hole. I understand that it will be hard for you, but it's harder for her. Her dad is dead, and she needs her mother. Step up. This is exactly it. This would be the last interaction you likely would have with your ex-husband's family. I think you can push through and be there for your daughter. She divorced him because he was sick. She doesn't want to face the in-laws because they know that when he needed her, she bailed. And now her daughter needs her. She's trying to bail on her. Seems like a pattern to me. You're the a-hole. This is not about you. This is about your daughter who wants your support at her other parents' funeral. What other moments will you miss because you refuse to be in the same place as her paternal family? Graduation? Her wedding? How many times in her 16 years have you forced her to choose between you? Get over yourself and go to the damn funeral. 100% agreed. My dad died when I was 20. My mom didn't take me to the hospital when we found out he'd been taken there. I didn't know he was already dead. My best friend's mom did. My mom never offered to drive me to my grandparents where the funeral was. I had to get a ride from a family member. I didn't have a car or license. Zero support from my mom. My parents had been split up for a long time but were civil. There was no reason at all. Except my mom won't deal with emotionally hard situations. And I get to suffer the consequences. It's a pattern. And as an adult, I don't really want to have a relationship with her as a result because she's too emotionally stunted to deal with her own crap. Next story. Am I the a-hole for visiting my late husband's grave every month with my kids? Plus, little update. I, 31 female, lost my ex-husband two years ago. We were married for five years before I passed away due to cancer. He has given me two beautiful kids, twins, both six years male. After his passing, initially, I used to visit his grave every week, and I used to sit there with my sons, bring him flowers, my kids would often make cards. But then it became a monthly routine. The kids would get excited visiting daddy. I have already had a talk with my kids, about their father passing, about why they don't see him around. Then I met John, 36 May last year. I wasn't looking forward to dating anyone honestly, but he made me feel safe. 
gave me the space to grieve about my ex, and he was great with the kids. He proposed to me two weeks ago. I was overjoyed, and so were the kids. They love him so much. Yesterday, the kids and I were going out to visit my ex's grave as we do every month. My fiancé seemed like he was upset about it, but didn't say anything when we were leaving. I asked him if he wanted to come, and he said no. Cut to yesterday evening, when we were having dinner and the kids were talking about how they told their daddy about John. He again seemed upset, and changed the topic. When we were going to bed, I asked him again. He said that he was the kid's dad now, and he feels left out when we go to my ex's grave. I told him that he can come along, even pointed out that I did ask him if he wanted to that day. I have also asked him if he wanted to previously. He said I'm creating an unhealthy attachment for the kids with someone who's not even there, and that I have an unhealthy attachment to my ex-husband. I told him that he knew what he was getting into, and this wasn't an unhealthy attachment. The kids deserve to know who their father was. And just because he's their father doesn't mean that John can't be theirs too. It's not a competition, and he shouldn't treat it that way. He slept on a couch on his own accord yesterday night and hasn't spoken to me since. Am I the a-hole for bringing my kids along to their late father's grave? I feel like I might be the a-hole for making my fiancé feel excluded. And he might be the a-hole for making this a competition between him and my ex. Edit. I'm sorry for causing any confusion by calling him my ex-husband. We were married until he passed away. I meant my late husband. Not stay home. Getting married to you doesn't make him their dad. And there is nothing unhealthy at all over them mourning their loss. And likewise for you. He's an a-hole, plain and simple. Thank you. He's literally making it seem that now that he is here, they don't need their dad anymore, which is just so weird to me. He's acting as if he's in competition with the dad's spouse, and that's not healthy. Maybe counseling will help him sort out his feelings. Your deceased husband isn't going to be replaced like he's a puzzle piece, and John needs to understand that. True, please don't marry him until this is resolved. But have a conversation about keeping the kid's last name or for this to become a conversation when the kids are 16 and can choose for themselves, although they should keep their late father's name in my opinion. Not stay home. He is for basically saying you and your children are no longer able to visit the grave of their dad because he's now in the picture. He isn't his replacement. You welcomed each other into each other's lives, and him wanting to spend the rest of your lives together means he has to accept some of your past will be a part of your future together. Exactly. And we've had that discussion before. I told him that my ex-husband will always be a part of my life, especially since we have had kids together but it's not like John is less important. And I do intend, did, and having kids with John too. But now I'm worried he'll treat my kids from a previous marriage different from the ones we might have later just because he pulled this move. It's quite insulting to you as his partner to disregard the thoughts and feelings of yourself and your children. It makes me feel he doesn't fully understand the loss and grief you guys are going through. And instead of talking about that with you, he's instead acting out and taking it out on you instead. I know this might be difficult to hear, but if you're feeling that way with future kids, it may be an idea to rethink if this is a man you want to marry. Yes, I am starting to feel that he doesn't understand it either. He did earlier, or pretended to. Some people on this thread said this is a sign of mistreatment, but now I'm rethinking everything that he might have pretended to be. Definitely reconsidering marriage. Now for the little update. I am overwhelmed by everyone's responses and I'm reading all of them. Sorry if it takes time to reply. I really want to thank everyone for opening my eyes to this situation. A lot of you guys suggested that this is a sign of abuse, and I honestly didn't know that before. It's been overwhelming to come to this realization, but I'm glad I know this now before we got married. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for calling my friend an idiot for wanting a maternity test? My friend Dan recently found out he might be a father. I say might, because the girl he's been having an off-slash-on relationship with, Kara, is pregnant, and he's not sure if he's the dad. She offered to get a paternity test once the baby is born, and doesn't expect any kind of support until they find out if the baby's his. He's on board with that, and appreciates that she's not pushing him into fatherhood if the baby isn't his. 
The issue is that when he was talking to me about it, he also said he wants to get a maternity test done to make sure the baby is hers. Kara is visibly pregnant. We know she's pregnant because she did a maternity photo shoot and posted it on social media. So it's obvious she's not faking being pregnant. We've both seen her in person too, and she's most definitely pregnant. However, Dan believes that the baby might not be hers. I tried to explain to him that that's not how biology works. And unless she got an embryo implanted in her, then she's definitely the mother. She's a waitress and works for minimum wage plus tips, so I doubt she has the money to afford an embryo implantation. Plus, it's ridiculous to think that she'd do all that just to baby trap a guy who is unemployed and living with his parents at 32. Plus, he's never donated sperm. He is genuinely convinced that the baby might not biologically be hers, despite not only me, his mom, and our other friends explaining that that's not how baby slash pregnancy works. He's still insisting on a maternity test and told me that I was being ridiculous and that I'm the one who doesn't understand biology, despite me studying to be an autopsy pathologist which has required quite literally years of biology classes. I got fed up and called him a senseless idiot and told him to call me when he got his head screwed back on straight. Ever since then, he has been spamming my phone and has gotten a couple of our friends to spam me as well, telling me I'm being sensitive and he's just stressed about possibly being a dad. So, am I the a-hole for calling my friend an idiot? Now for the comments. You call them like you see them and, wow, his bulb doesn't have many lumens. That poor child. I hope it takes after the mother her. Not stay home. I love that. I hope you don't mind if I steal that phrase. Well, how bright can the mother be? I mean, she slept with this guy. Not stay home. What the actual heck? That was my response. After the words came out of his mouth for the first time, I quite literally said, What the actual heck are you talking about, Dan? I have to know, what is actually theory about how the baby was formed? Let's take it at face value. Somehow it is possible she got pregnant from an egg that was not her own. How does he propose that this happened? But not day whole. What the heck? I've tried asking him his reasoning, and he tried to explain to me something about how when women's menstrual cycles sync up, it's possible for them to share eggs. It makes sense to him because Kara lives with three other women, and their periods tend to happen around the same time. He thinks one of her roommates could be the true mother. He also believed in telegony up until a year ago or so, but our friends and I were able to explain to him why that's not possible. It took way too long for him to understand it though. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for calling my wife a hypocrite for making our son do chores when he's sick but not our daughter? My wife, 43, and I, 41, have two kids a 16-year-old son from a previous relationship of mine, and a 14-year-old daughter. My son has been living with us full-time since he was four. To the current issue, my son has been suffering from cluster headaches for about one year now. They run in my family. He gets them every other month. Yesterday, he got hit by one again while I was at work and my wife was home. When I got home in the afternoon, I found my son in the driveway carrying pots of plants inside. My wife loves everything that has to do with gardening and plants and regularly buys new ones. A rather attempting too. He was visibly in pain, pale, moving slowly, the typical watery eye, etc. When I asked him what he was doing, he told me my wife had told him to help her move those. But I didn't think he was in any condition to do so and sent him inside and to bed. I got inside and confronted my wife with it, and she immediately got mad at me, saying it wasn't a big deal for him and that she had him take one of his pills. They help but can only do so much. So I reminded her that she lets our daughter stay home from school for two days every month and frees her of any chores when she's on her period. It is essentially being a biased hypocrite. We argued for a while, and she said I'm undermining her authority, but I insisted on leaving our son alone for the day and carried the plans inside myself, which I'd done anyway had she just waited for me. Just to clarify, I don't interfere with my wife keeping our daughter home when she's not well. If she says that's necessary, then it's fine with me. I'm also not asking what is worse, but I don't think it was okay for her to make our son do this when he was in a lot of pain and basically grimacing with every movement. She also knows that he's not that great at standing up for himself. 
But am I the a-hole for that argument? As a person with headaches and period pain, your wife is an a-hole. Not a hole Yep, same. I get bad period cramps and backache, but it doesn't even compare to the massive headaches I get. When I have cramps, I can still move around, but when I get a headache, I just can't. Moreover, they are cluster migraines. Migraines need painkillers, a dark, quiet room and sleep. Not manual labor. Not day holo pee. Yeah, this isn't just some headache. This is bad enough that people have killed themselves to get rid of the pain. It's one of the most painful things known to medical science. Not day hall, but your wife is. Seems to me like your daughter gets special treatment over your son. I know both are your children. Either she is sexist and thinks women are inferior to men, since the daughter doesn't have to do any chores because of her period but your son has to do chores through cluster headaches, or she has less respect for your son since she didn't give birth to him. Oh, I didn't catch she was the stepson. Yep, that could be a factor too. Not stay home. You should probably investigate in what other ways your wife is actively mistreating your son. Hey, thank you. About my son and wife's relationship in the past, she's always been an important figure in his life, as it was very hard on him to lose his bio mom so early. She got really sick shortly after his fourth birthday and has been unable to care for him since. My wife made effort to be a good stepmom to him. However, she did get stricter on him as he became a teenager. She has experienced some bad stories about kids turning their backs on step-parents in her family. We talked about this a lot and even did counseling for a while, which helped the issue. That being said, I was caught off guard and extremely shocked when I heard what my wife had made him do while he was unwell. I'll definitely investigate now. We have a small vacation house. I'm thinking about taking him there for the weekend. I don't know. He usually tells me things.